This meeting is being recorded. Hello, and welcome back to the Ask the Color Expert podcast. Today's special guest is a long and dear friend of mine, Bob Phillip from Salon Centric. He is a salon business partner with Salon Centric. So we both have made many changes since we have seen each other, and I'm so excited to have him here as my special guest. Welcome, Bob. Thank you, Elaine. I'm very excited. It's nice you thought to you got up. rid of me when I left the salon, right? <laughs> it's been too long. It so. has. It surely has. And you've honestly, been coming up in conversation a lot, by the way. Oh, so, my ears are good. burning. I, I need to hear it all good, I hope. Always. Awesome. Awesome. So Always. I really wanted to have you on here because, you know, you're such an integral part of every salon owner's business, yet, you know, you're not going to be on Instagram tooting your own horn and showing up and doing all things jazz hands. You're kind of like the secret partner that we all know and love. And what I've loved about our relationship is you, you stood out, you know, there's so many reps that come in and try to sell people things. And you know how scary I am when, when you come into the salon. So I can only imagine your first, first impression because salon owners, you know, frankly, you're, you're an interruption of our day. You know what I mean? We have so many balls that we juggle. We're behind the chair. We're training. We're hiring. We're doing all the things. We're doing the accounting, the bookkeeping. So when someone walks in and says, hi, I'm Bob, and I want to sell you more perms, we're just like, please go away. Um, but your style was so non-invasive. You were You always were respectful of my time as an owner, but also being my partner in my business. You know, we would set a time and make an appointment and sit down in my office and strategize. And you and I had so many things in common with some of the people that we follow for self-help things. We recommended books to each other. We're, we've been friends for, I don't know, it has to be over 20 years. I think, did you used to come to the first salon? I think that's where we first met. I did in, in at the your first Roxborough location. Yes, yeah. yep. So it's, it's yes, been a 20 so it's year been run. 21 years. <laughs> Yeah. It's 21 years and I haven't scared you away. <laughs> I Quite love the that. contrary. So, so let's talk about what you see, you know, this whole COVID mess, as you know, has been hard on everyone. And I'm sure you love the interaction of being with other people. And I'm sure you had a long run where you could not be with people. How did you adjust to what was going on and still be that trusted partner but not be able to be there physically supporting those owners. Sure. Well, first and foremost, thank you for the the kind words. And I feel like our interaction over the years, you know, taught me to be the consultant that I, I needed to be. Um, you know, I, I learned a lot from our conversations for sure. And, um, you know, and, and, you challenging me to be, you know, to differentiate myself, you know, from everyone else. And, and, you know, I, I think of our relationship in, in that way and how you help guide, you know, and, and define that path for me. Um, to answer your question, I mean, yeah, COVID was, I, I felt like I, I went, I, I was a, a, an accountant for, you know, PPP loans to, mm. you know, a, a, trying to be a, a politician, you know, getting in, in, involved with, you know, the local politicians. And, you know, it was, um, you know, I, I saw it as an opportunity to, to give back to the industry. You know, I mean, I, I do, I, I love this business, um, you know, and instead of kind of, you know, taking a step back, I felt like I, I doubled down, you know, to just to really to fight for our industry, you know, at a time where it was just very scary. Nobody, there was no real clean cut direction. And, um, you know, I felt like, you know, Summit was a, a great partner for us to really give some great information and, um, you know, using the social media channels, you know, I, social media was something that, um, you know, I was dabbling with, but during the shutdown, it, using that platform to get information out there, it was, it was very effective. And, and that was a big pivot for me, um, you know, doing this, you know, using, you know, using technology, you know, using Zoom and, and, uh, you know, using the, the technologies that were afforded to keep constant contact, even though I couldn't be present. 
So I love that you pointed that out, that you didn't just cower and hide and say, oh, well, nobody's open, nothing I can do. You know, being able to step up and be that support system the statistics that I've heard are really upsetting about how many salons closed since the, the onset of COVID, how many hairstylists have completely left the industry. The, the statistics are staggering and they, they were already getting bad before COVID um, because salon owners are finally educating themselves and understanding that it's money in, money out, and they were not really making a profit. Um, you and I have had many of those conversations where I'm like, by the time I pay all of my overhead and my staff, there's very little left for the business, let alone my own family. You know, it became a, you see all this money coming in, you're like, woohoo, great month. And then you pay everything out and you're like, okay, not so great. Um, and we, we could no longer keep putting that extra um, money differential on the client because the client was like, whoa, you know, how much is my haircut going to be soon if you keep raising it? But unfortunately, especially now with supply chain, you know, everything has gone up, the cost of gloves, the cost of foil. Do you have a struggle where, where your clients are kind of like mad at you when you're, when you're coming to them with the, with the bear of bad news of these increases? Sure. I, you know, the, the inflation conversation, it's, it's real. Uh, it's, it's undeniable. Um, you know, going back to using some, some real data, you know, um, you know, going back to the original point of, of profitability. And, you know, I thought the driving force for me when I heard the statistic of 85% of salons in the United States are not profitable without the working owner behind the chair. I mean, that's, that's staggering. And, um, you know, again, I felt like that was a, the basis of a lot of our, our talking points. You know, I think before you're actually in the, the, the owner's seat, you, your, your perception of what the, the margins really are, are, I, they're very skewed in, in my experience. Um, another statistic, because there was conversations around, you know, COVID charges and, you know, uh, trying to absorb um, the cost of PPE and, and so on and so forth. But when you look at it, you know, they say 10% of salons are, or pardon me, um, that the majority of salons are charging 10% less than what they should be from a, a pricing standpoint. Absolutely. And that can translate into giving away glazes and toners or, you know, giving away services and, and that business practice can, can no longer exist, you know, and, and my message is we, we just need to start charging properly for our services. And, and at that point, I think it, and, and, and offering more, you know, I, I think, you know, offering every service that, that the salon has to offer that way, it doesn't, it's not just, oh, it's a, you know, a, a charge for PPE, but it's, we're offering a, a new service. We're, we're, we're developing new revenue streams, you know, and, and in, in turn, those revenue streams are enhancing the services of the guest because they're, they're getting introduced to more. Maybe they're, they're getting a treatment on the back bar. That's a great experience. So th that's, that's been my message to offset some of the, the inherent costs that, that we're seeing across the board. Absolutely. One of my favorite uh, quotes from John DeJulius, who you turned me on to going to see John DeJulius in person. Um, he's great with all things customer service. And he said, make the service so amazing that the client doesn't even care how much it is. They're not questioning. When you're getting a lot of clients questioning their bill at the end of the service, something was not right. You know, it's not about the money. It's about the feeling and the experience that if they're questioning it, you know, you go out to a restaurant, you have great service, everything's hot, everything tastes amazing. You're getting, you know, a really amazing experience. The music is right. The atmosphere is right. You get the bill, you plop your card down, you don't even look at it. If you have a terrible waiter, you're checking to make sure you didn't get charged, you know, for an extra drink or an extra appetizer that didn't come or whatever it is, you're going to nickel and dime it when it's a poor experience. So I think if people turned everything that way, where it's how can we be so good that price is irrelevant, that we don't have to worry about every single penny that's on the client's ticket. Um, you had a great point with the giving away the free glazes and those kind of things. I still have people that will 
come back at me when I say that on a forum, when they ask questions and I'll say, they'll say, well, I include my haircut with my color service. I think everyone should. And I'm like, why? You know, if you go to a restaurant and you order an appetizer, a cocktail, um, an entree and dessert and an after dinner coffee, they don't take any of those things off the bill because you're nice and you were, had a good conversation with them. And yet that's what we tend to do as here. Well, I really like her. She's one of my favorite clients. She's easy. It wasn't that much color that I put on. You know, we kind of talk our way into a lower ticket, which in turn, the client does not know we did that. So they just think they paid the full price. They don't get that they were given a pass for anything. And then the gratuity is based on the total that you made shorter. So now you gypped yourself out of your full total and your gratuity. And I think when you see the national averages of income of hairdressers, I'm always upset to see what they say because it's just not livable, you know, the, the wages. But I think a lot of times hairdressers are not counting their gratuities as part of their wage. You know, when I would give my W-2 to my staff, I would say, don't forget you had gratuities in there. Like make sure that you add that in there when you do your taxes, because if you think you made 30, you may real, you may might as uh, had like 50,000 with your gratuities. Um, I know the world is changing as far as people don't get cash anymore. They're doing it on the credit cards, which is a whole other nightmare for owners. <laughs> Um, but think things keep constantly changing and kudos to you for still being here, still fighting the fight and still supporting the owners. Is there something for people that are listening? Is there something that you could share that you think going into 2022 is a best practice that they may not be thinking of? That is the new way of doing business that they need to be aware of. So one thing that when you're your tip revenue, I, I, I want to kind of hone in on that because one of the the most rewarding things I, I did um I had Peter Mahoney so uh, another awesome. yeah a, another you know friend of ours and and certainly a great mentor and he he taught a program on the the management of, of personal finances and you know and specifically how it relates to to tip income and how you know I, I it's a common practice to just look at it as, as disposable income. And, but looking at whether it's, you know, how to, to invest those dollars. And it, like you said, it's, it's too common of a, whether it's, it's the wages or just, you know, the inability to retire, you know, at a, at a reasonable age, you know, and, and just the overall money management. And, and I'm, I'm in the process now of, I, I have an associate that is, is training under me and, and they're the things that we talk about, you know, it's like, she's 23 years old and it's like to be able to, to have those disciplines in place at that age. And, you know, to, and to think about, you know, the end game, you know, and, and that I feel like has been, it's, again, like trying to elevate our industry and, you know, and, and teaching to that. And I feel like this generation of, of, of hairdressers coming up, I, I feel, I hope they are. I, I feel like they're more keen. They're thinking about, you know, their, their, their retirement and benefits and, you know, what that's going to look like, but it, it is my mission to, to, to really continue to bring the Peter Mahoney's of the world or for my, or for me to, you know, be the messenger to, you know, to, to really, cause it's, it is so important. Um, so that, that was, that. One, cause the sooner you start the about. better for sure. No question. Yeah. I mean, compound the concept of compound interest and, you know, just the, the, the financial education that I feel like it's just, is so lacking. So well, and, our mutual friend, Donna is doing an amazing job at that too. Donna Virgio, she does fierce financials. She had my brain exploding. I did her program. Bryn and I did it together. And she's very into spreadsheets, but she knows I am highly allergic to <laughs> <I hate> spreadsheets. <laughs> so she kept saying, I don't see your spreadsheet filled out. It was in a Google doc where she could see whether I did it or not. And I was like, oh, it gives me hives to sit down and do that. But it was definitely eye-opening to see like Bryn, I think from the time she started the program until the end, I think she had an extra $10,000 put aside that she said, I would have spent that on eating out, 
movies, you know, like just here, there spending the money, but she had it on automatic deposit into a savings account like that spurred her to, you know, set those things up. Michael Cole, you know, back in the eighties was my hero with that, but he broke it down so simply to the hairdresser. He didn't get into too much, you know, financial terms that make you like, Oh God, this is too much for me. He just said $5 a day, take $5 a day of your tips. If you start before you're 25, you will guarantee to have a million dollars in the bank when you retire. Like it was so simple. And you're yep. like, oh my God, a million dollars. That's so great. And you start doing it. And then, you know, a year in, you forget that you did it. And then two years later, you're like, oh crap, I have to start doing that again. And we're all guilty of it. We're all guilty of if we do still get cash chips, which is very rare, we're guilty of, hey, Starbucks is on me. What do you guys want? You know, it's like, woohoo, free money. Let's go spend it up. Um, so I think that rainy, I think a few good things have come from COVID. One of them being, you don't know what's coming and when would you ever think that you would be told you cannot work? You absolutely mm -hmm. have, have no ability to work and you should not be doing it. Um, I can't, I can't imagine we would ever have foreseen that happening, let alone the amount of time that it endured, you know, the whole process was crazy. And Australia just went through it again recently. They just opened the back up. So it's like every country keeps, it keeps going in waves with California and Australia and Ireland and here. And it's just, it's just been absolutely awful. So I'm happy that you're, you're still boots on the ground. You're still supporting salon owners. So you mentioned summit, which I did the entire summit program. It was really great for me to understand my numbers and to grow staff to the point where I grew so many. I, I, we talked about Peter. I reached out to Peter and I said, your system's great. It's working great. Here's the problem. I have too many associates graduating, going on the floor and not enough chairs. And he said, well, that's a great problem to have. You have to open another salon. I said, that's the problem. Like, I don't want that. <laughs> I already had two salons. I don't want another salon. And then he said, well, that's okay. Right. Take your double A people and have them open a salon. I'm like they don't want to open a salon either. And he was like, I've never had this problem before. Like I was, of course, the, the purple cow as I always am. And he said, well, that's a great problem to have. And I said, you're right, it is, but it's still a problem. So um, I, I definitely recommend it to any business owners that are struggling with structure. Cause I, as you know, hate structure. It was like my, the bane of my existence. Um, I forced myself to do an employee manual. I forced myself to do more structure so that the training became easier for new hires. Um, so, you know, you and I could talk all day long, but um, if you could give your your last advice to people and, and make sure you tell people how to reach out to you if they need some support and all of the wonderful things that you've done for us, but what would your um, number one thing for advice for 2022 be? You know, I, I think it charging properly you know, is, is huge. I, I just think, cause it's so, it's just so common and, um, and going back to, you know, going in with the, the mantra of what you said, you know, it's like, how can we make price irrelevant? You know, um, I, I think about even, I, I took my, my son, my boys to the movies and I haven't been to a movie and I can't tell you how long. And I don't think anyone has. <laughs> Yeah. And, uh, but I, you know, I go in and it's stadium seating and reclining seats and like, th this is all new to me. And, you know, and the, it was not an expense. I couldn't believe how much we had to pay, you know, it was whatever it was. I think it was $75 for, you know, a three seats, a, a large popcorn and a soda. And, but it was an elevated experience. It was something that when I left, I was like, you know what, I, I would, I would do that again, you know? So seeing the evolution and like, we can look at movie theaters, restaurants, we can see the evolution of, of, of different companies that are doing, they're using technologies or, or they're doing things to, to find ways to elevate the, the client experience. And I think that we, we have to be undying in, in that because, that's the only way that we're, we're going to be able to justify pricing, you know, cause it's, it, Hey, if, if margins were tight before COVID they're, they're going to be even tighter now. And, and we need to find ways to, to be creative. 
Absolutely. And that that's great advice. That is something that people need to uh, definitely hone in on and take a look at, you know, whether they're profitable or not. So tell people how they can find you and your fabulous self in case they're in need of a, an amazing lifeline in our industry. What's your Instagram handle? So my in- Instagram handle is at beauty biz, Bob. And um, yeah. And I, I mean, I'm, I'm very active on there. So I, I'm very accessible through that, that channel. So yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you yeah. so much. It is always a pleasure to chat with you. We need to do this again. We need more time to, to dive into some deeper, deeper things, but it's always a pleasure. I love seeing well, you. Well, this was an honor. I put my, my best shirt on the, the whole nine yards. Oh, so thank it's, you. It's wonderful to, uh, to catch <laughs> up and uh, congratulations on what, what you're doing for, for our industry. It's wonderful. So thank you. We, we need to talk after this because I have a brand new project that I think you'll be um, excited about. And I need you to help me share. So okay. I'll be calling I'm you after, so. after we wrap up. Awesome. Okay. Great to see you right. as always. Take care. Thank you so much, Aline. Are you off?